Hello to all Ghana loving Ghanaians. Welcome to Nasich, where it's all about Ghana and people. Patriotic views from country and people point. And in the interest of Ghana must work, we all want Ghana to work, and Ghana can work. Please subscribe to the channel, like it, and forward it to other Ghana loving Ghanaians. Welcome. Ghana CD depreciation and Professor Hank of John Hopkins University. Professor Hank is back again and he is gaslighting Ghana's economy and the Ghana city as though Ghana city is the only currency that is having issues. I mean, since the COVID and the start of this um, Russia-Ukraine war, there's been a lot of economic issues. But for some interesting reasons, Professor Hank is taking some deep interest in Ghana's affairs. And for what reason, Nasich, we don't know. We're going to look through some of what he's saying and what might possibly be the reason. Now we'll start with um, what he said, his most recent tweet. And this is what he has said. Ghana CD depreciation. And this was on the Ghana web. Ghana's economy death spiral just keeps spinning at high speed that's what he said as a matter of fact it is painful that professor steve h hung of john hopkins university united states who sit in u.s and wanting to gaslight ghana's economy for reasons best known to himself and as a matter of fact as Nasij is a patriotic channel in the interest of Ghana and people, we say he should back off and stop interfering in our economy and democracy. It feels like Professor Hank is a propagandist projecting speculative figures and information about third world countries for the benefit of US dollar and its economy. And it's possible that he's been doing this for a long time now. Look at his inflation table. He has his own personal inflation table. Where he got his information from, of course, I have some information what prevailing information he uses to, to tabulate or speculate those his Inflation figures that are out of alignment and is nowhere near what is the official figure on the uh, trading economics. Look at his table. And look at the first 19 countries. What do they all have in common? I guess it's as good as mine. Now, now, since we've taken the time to look at some of the factors that, in, in effect, affect the um, inflation, depreciation of a currency, a country's currency. In this case, we are looking at Ghana, and we are comparing it with the U.S. Because Professor Hank is so interested in Ghana's affair, and he has made it his sole responsibility to gaslight Ghana's economy with his speculative figures, that is unacceptable. Inflation, interest rate, public debt, political stability, economic health, balance of trade, current account deficit, and confidence or speculation and government intervention. These are the factors that influences the appreciation or depreciation of a currency. So now, let's have a look. It, it said, countries with inflation typical 
uh, low inflation typically have stronger currency compared to those with higher inflation rates. So question is, is this why Professor Hunt is so interested in hiking Ghana's inflation figures outside of what the official figures are to succeed in making sure Ghana's city is weaker than the U.S. dollar, especially where Ghana is on its way to agree some sort of deal with IMF? What are the official figures on the trading economics? Ghana's current uh, uh, figure is 32.3 from 30.7 previously. And U.S. figure is 10.9 from 10.4 previously. But Professor Hank is projecting 79% for Ghana. And this is where Professor Hank takes his information from. He says he Professor Hank's inflation rate is compiled using PPP, what is the purchasing power parity, from free and black market exchange rates. So I ask, why? Why is Professor Hunk not using the prevailing bank rates? Why black market rates? Only God knows. What's the next thing on the list? Interest rates. Interest rates. Previously, Professor Hunk was having a go at Ghana, Bank of Ghana, and their attempts to curb the uh, inflation when they increased the uh, interest rate by 300 basic points to 22%. He was all over the internet arguing about it. But here is the case. European Central Bank and even the U.S. has or have increased their interest rate. Also in attempt to do what? To curb their inflation. Yet, Professor Hank is sitting in the U.S. having a go at Ghana's official for attempting to keep their inflation. Why is he so interested in wanting Ghana's inflation to be so high for which he's going to take figures from black market? Not only that, U.S. and the European Central Bank, they stay hawkish into the future according to their own assertions. Now, Sage, we've decided to look at some more information on this depreciation. As per our previous video or input, we believe that the depreciation of Ghana's currency is questionable and is possibly not natural. Maybe it's manipulation, especially with Professor Hank on the internet projecting speculative figures to the disadvantage and detriment of Ghana's economy for which he is saying is on his death. And is on a, what, how did he even put it? This is how he put it. Ghana's economy death spiral just keeps spinning at high speed. You see the choice of words? He's playing with words. So I hope we went to Wikipedia to see what Wikipedia have to say. Now, why did we go to Wikipedia? Because Professor Hank keeps banging on about Ghana to install currency board. But the interesting thing is, U.S. doesn't have currency board. Most of the major countries do not have currency board. And not to jump forward, I'll go through it and show you some information. The challenges that comes with having a... Um, a currency board and what it takes to achieve it and the possibility of causing hyperinflation our officials should not listen to him it doesn't matter how he is a professor for america he should help them we are fine we will come out of it so based on that we decided to look at what is this about this currency board now, this is what Wikipedia have to say. Now, I'll read it verbatim, okay? A currency board is a monetary authority which requires, which is required to maintain a fixed exchange rate with 
a foreign currency. In this case, possibly Professor Hank wants us to use US dollars, the pegging figure for our currency board. This policy objective requires the conventional objectives of central banks to be subordinated to the exchange rate target. <laughs> in colonial administration, colonial, in colonial administration, currency boards were popular because of the advantage of printing appropriate denominations for local conditions, and it also benefited the colony with signorate revenue. However, after the World War II, many independent current, current countries prefer to have central banks and independent currencies. Professor Hank, Ghana is not a colonial nation anymore, so stop forcing us to install a currency. But if US doesn't have it, uh, why are you insisting we should have it? Perhaps, again, your usual stuff, making sure it benefits America. Maybe there's a benefit in America for Ghana to have uh, um, uh, a currency board using US as the pegging currency. He went on to say, more than 70 countries have had, that doesn't mean they, they used to have it, have had currency boards. Currency boards were widespread in the early mid-20s. That's what Wikipedia have to say. Now let's go to IMF site. At the IMF site, there's a, an article there that is said to be December 1998, volume 35, number 4. And it is titled, Are Currency Boards a Cure for All Monetary Problems? Question mark. On that article, there are 14 countries that have the currency board. 10 of those countries uses US dollar as the pegging currency. Think on that. But this is what is said on the IMF website, and I'll read. Currency board arrangements may be coming back, may be coming back into fa fashion. But these nations are not colonial nations anymore. So what benefit is needed for them? Anyway, what recent success have countries had with currency boards? And in what circumstances are they most likely to be effective? Question mark. So it is not proven that it is effective. There are so many things written. I've read them, but I've jumped to the conclusion of that article and I'll read it again verbatim. I hope you have uh, your listening. Currency boards in many countries have achieved impressive economic results, both in achieving lower inflation than other exchange rate regimes and in stabilizing expectations after prolonged after prolonged hyperinflation there have thus been calls for such already Ghana's inflation is going up and you want them to install a currency board in this very crucial time to set our inflation on the cost of hyperinflation who would do that There have thus been calls for such arrangements to be established in rather diverse groups of other countries, many of which are in crisis. Such calls should be viewed worriedly. This is IMF. The article is on the website of IMF. This should be viewed worriedly by national governments for at least three reasons. First, the success stories largely reflects the experience of smaller countries. And I've seen the country, some islands, and very small, smaller than Ghana. Only a few, I mean two, I think, big countries, I think. First, the success stories largely reflect experience smaller experiences smaller countries have had with currency boards, whose application to larger countries has yet to be fully demonstrated. Bear that in mind. Second, and equally important, 
the successful establishment of a currency board arrangement requires time. So it's even though Professor Hunk is jumping on about it, banging on Ghana to install a currency board, it is not like it just push off a button. It requires a lot of input. It requires a lot of work. It's not an overnight thing. Arrangement requires time for building consensus as well as for careful planning and implementation of important legal and institutional changes. So currency board installment is not just coming as, oh, just no. There's going to be changes, institutional changes. Who is paying for them? Who is going to pay for that? Professor Hunt? Thirdly, countries with one or several weak banks may have to rehabilitate them before changing their monetary regimes. Hello? These re requisites to establishing a currency board may in many cases be too involved and too much time to take it too much time to make it advisable for a country to attempt to do so during a microeconomic crisis which of course evidently Ghana's inflation is going up those challenges the city is depreciating either by natural means or by manipulation it is depreciating so as stated earlier, is Professor Hank a propaganda tool for US dollar and its economy to get third world countries to opt in for currency board? Even though it is not proven yet to be effective or will be effective with bigger countries like country, Ghana. Because the countries on the list, they are not as big as Ghana, only two, maybe Argentina. The next country is Djibouti and some Caribbean islands, right? But look at the exchange rate as far as this Djibouti and Argentina is concerned. One US dollar is to 140 US uh, uh, Argentina pesos. One US dollar equals to 177 Djibouti franc. What will Ghana's own bill after installing currency board? Let's go on to the next factor. Public debt. I won't say much, but I'll just give the figures for you to think on it. Ghana's external debt is 28 billion US dollars. US ex external debt is 23 trillion dollars. Think on that. Yet, Ghana's city is depreciating at an alarming rate against US dollar. Mm, doesn't add up. Political stability. Here I want to say, is this why Professor Hank is trying to say uh, shops are closing down in Ghana for uh, in demonstration? Like I said previously, shops are closing in UK, in America, all around the world because of the post-COVID tailwinds that is running through the nations. So it's not only Ghana. At the moment, I would say the U.S. political scene is more turbulent than Ghana. Why do I say so? Biden just declared almost more than half of the nation as extremists because they support a certain group of people. That is a serious disposition. At least Nana Kufuado has not declared half of Ghana's population extremists. So if there be anything that should make a country unstable to affect its currency, it should be America. So why is Professor Hank on about Ghana? As though U.S. doesn't have issues. They do. This is why I am not very comfortable when uh, Kevin said about Professor Hank that Ghanaians should demonstrate. Because demonstration is a sign of political instability and it will work against the currency. So that's not how we, go, we have to resolve this matter. It needs proper thinking, strategic positioning of country, factors, informations, 
economically to turn things around, not a demonstration. Health of the economy. In, in that case, low employment, interest rate, inflation, and balance of trade, they all form what is called the health of the economy. Those are one of the informations. I'm not going to dwell there. If we go to balance of trade, US dollar has a deficit of 79 billion balance of trade. Ghana has 131 million in surplus. Current account deficit. US dollar, US has 291 billion in their current account deficit is 291 billion, Ghana 1 billion. Now, confidence and speculation, and I want to dwell here a little bit. Is this why Professor Hunk is projecting very interesting figures, speculative figures, to weaken Ghana's currency? Because if confidence and speculation is one of the factors that appreciate or depreciate a currency, then Professor Hank's behavior is unacceptable, it is deliberate, it's a propaganda behavior to drive Ghana's currency very low to the advantage of the U.S. dollar, especially as Ghana is on its way to IMF. Ghana owes IMF, Ghana owes World Bank, and what do you think that is? It's going to be very difficult for Ghana to pay. And that means whatever the interesting deals that we're going to be giving, they have no choice than to accept. Previously, as I read, there are things that the programming would change. So it's possible some infrastructure projection economically will be things of the past because we have jumped on this IMF program. There is a video we have on IMF. Go and listen from country and people point. That's what we do, message. Government intervention. European Central Bank, U.S., their government have all acted in attempt to curb the inflation that is going on around the world. Yet, Professor Hank is not happy or comfortable with the fact that Ghana's leaders are taking actions, equal actions, to stall the inflation. Why? Why is it that ECB and U.S., China, all these nations are taking measures to curb inflation, but yet Professor Hank don't want Ghana to do anything. Why? We are not stupid. What did they do? ECB and U.S., as I've mentioned previously, they have increased their interest rate and their central banks are hawkish in long term meaning they are going to be increasing it until they have seen a slowdown to the inflation. At least, I think from U.S. point, or I think European Central Bank, when I was listening to the news, says they want to bring it to the usual two-point range. So what is wrong Ghana doing the same to curb inflation? What is wrong, Professor Hunk? What is wrong? This is what China has done, or is doing, as per CNBC, People's Bank of China will reduce the amount of foreign currency banks need to hold. Why are they doing this? Such moves, they said, theoretically reduces the weakening pressure on the yuan, which has decreased or depreciated to two-year lows versus against the U.S. dollar. So it's not only Ghana's currency that is depreciating against the U.S. dollar. Whether the U.S. dollar is strong or not, that's another story. And finally, so what? They are doing this because of the upcoming political events in China and concerns about capital outflows prompted the People's Bank of China to make such moves to slow the pace of depreciation of their currency. And what is wrong if Ghana is doing the same? Professor Han and Ghana's leadership should be confident in their dealings. It's about time we trust ourselves to do good for ourselves. Because the whole world is at war with inflation. So in a mob fight, you got to watch out and throw your own blows. So Ghana, 
throw your own blow and do what needs done. We are smart enough, we are intelligent enough and not let Professor Han gaslight us into doing what is not good for country and people. Especially where he has his own personal inflation table where the first 19 countries are all third world countries and what do they all have in common? So before Professor Gahan sits in America, gaslighting Ghana's economy, using words to frighten Ghana, to say Ghana's economy on a death spiral at a speed, and banging on about Ghana installing currency, but even though it takes a lot for that to happen, and that could trigger hyperinflation, he should leave Ghana alone. We are smart and intelligent enough to do something about the situation. So we come your way. God bless Mother Ghana. Long live the full republic. This is all we have for you. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and forward it to other Ghana-loving Ghanaians.